Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be an updated Dragoonity deck profile for the April 29th, 2019 format due to popular demand from that combo video that I put up a couple days ago where I showed you how to do three and four negations or interruptions plus Goliath with three card Dragoonity combos. Basically, people want me to do this deck some justice and put a deck profile of it up on the channel because it is my favorite archetype. It sucks competitively, uh, but if you're trying to play this deck for fun, it's... You know, as long as you're approaching the deck with a competitive mindset, you could do well with it, like, on, a, like, a local tournament level, probably. Or if you're just playing with friends, like, it's probably going to be better than most of what they have if you're at least approaching it with the same sorts of theories that I'm putting into it. But I digress. It's kind of weird doing a Dragoonity deck profile on the channel again because it's been, like, like four, three or four years, something like that, since I've actually done a deck profile of this deck. But anyway... Let's not gas too much and waste too much time. Let's just jump straight into the profile. But before that, if you're new here and want to see more awesome Yu-Gi-Oh! content, I'd love to welcome you on board. I'd love to ask you to hit that subscribe button and enable notifications so you do not miss an upload. And go check out the channel and see if there's any other videos you might like. And other than that, if you like the video, make sure to drop a like on it before you leave and maybe leave a comment with some questions, comments, or concerns. And I would be definitely trying my best to address them. But other than that, if you want to see me live stream th up to three times a week, Twitch page is in the description if you want to go follow that. And if you want to join my channel's Discord server, a link to that is in the description down below as well. So with that out of the way, on to the deck profiles. This is a 40-card main deck with Upstart Goblin, so a 39-card deck. Three Dragoonies sent at us. Uh, no copies of Ducks. Ducks is not very good anymore. This card is a starter card. Uh, I thought this card was terrible when it was announced, and when it was announced, it was terrible. But who could have predicted that they were ever going to print either a Dragoonity link in the form of Romulus that does what that does, or Guard Dragon Links, which just make this card really good. So, couldn't really have predicted that one, but fortunately we have some broken extra deck dragon cards now to actually make combos happen. One copy of Zephyros. This card is not very good as a two or three of in this version of the deck. Uh, it gets better once we get Romulus because it becomes more of a card that you can start combos with and then have enough gas in the tank to finish out combos with because the combos require less cards overall. Uh, but as of right now, only a one of. Uh, two copies of Garuda the Wind Spirit. Uh, this card is just purely an extender. It makes your hands flow a little bit better in certain areas. I couldn't find a card that was better for the slot, essentially, because like you want to have a lot of like pot like potential wing beasts uh, in circulation. Uh, and if you do draw this card with one of your pre-established combos, it allows you to extend a bit further by doing things like properly synchro summoning your Gaederg, which means you can summon it back with Red Med later. Um, and just alter the combos a significant bit. Uh, so, like, I actually kind of want to play three of it, but we're trying to keep the deck as consistent as possible, which means upstart plus uh, 39 other cards. But three copies of Dragoonity Arma Mistleton. This card is, like, really good now. Uh, I thought this card would have fallen out of favor, uh, like, <laughs> but ever since MR4, this card has become, like, one of the best extenders that I've had. Uh, even though all your combos are, like, three-card combos, Synodus really just kind of made this card better, honestly, uh, because Synodus getting you access into more tuners and being a starter card meant that you're less reliant on Ravine, uh, and because Synodus accesses more cards, and because Coos, it was like a perfect storm of what made this card really good, because like Coos lets you go into Barco, which gets those resources back easily, uh, which means that Mistleton being the right level and the right summoning condition uh, is really, really good. But continuing onward, we have the one copy of Dragoonie Arma Leviton. And we also have the Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon. Uh, these two cards, I kind of wanted to just play two Leviton, or just the Leviton and no Red Med. Uh, but Red Med sort of functions as a fourth call by the grave. If your LP gets Ash and you have Red Med in hand, you just continue your combo like nothing ever happened and your opponent gets tight. Um, but also in certain combo sequences where you're extending your combo past the ones that I've shown you with the cookie cutter like three card combos, you get to a point where you have both Red Med and Leviton in circulation. And that's when things get really, really bonkers. Uh, so it's something that like made it still worth playing even though sometimes like most of the time You're not even going for darkness metal unless you're doing one of the really good combos or you're doing one of the lackluster combos like if you're doing one of the like Strictly down the road like middle ground combos. You're always going for Leviton If the combo is one of the worst ones you're going for red med and if it's one of the best ones you're going for red med But if it's strictly okay, you're always getting Leviton uh, but anyway, Tuner Boys, three uh, Phalanx and three copies of Coos. Uh, you obviously want to max out on these because they are cards you want to draw in conjunction with Ravine, you want to draw them in conjunction with Senatus, and you want to draw them in conjunction with cards of consonants. Uh, these cards just, you know, make the deck uh, operate. They're just, they're, they are literally the heart and soul of what makes this deck function. 
Um, like there, you want to see as many of these cards as possible, especially in a world without Romulus, 100%. But carrying on, more extenders in the form of Supreme King Dragon Dark Worm. Now we're not playing Dragon Shrine. We are playing Foolish. That does have synergy with this, but we're not playing Dragon Shrine in this version because we don't have Romulus. When we get Romulus, the deck building fundamentals of this deck do change a fair amount to where we can try and use Dark Worm off of Dragon Shrine to summon itself and then summon some other card without using our normal summon to make Romulus search Dragon Ravine. And then at that point, you'd be wanting to play Gate Zero alongside your Dark Worm because then that at that point, that Gate Zero becomes a free Ravine discard. You've added Ravine to your hand off Romulus and you've added uh, Gate Zero to be a free discard off of the Ravine if you didn't have anything that was really you know very palatable then but in this build we're not playing gate zero because we do not need the free discard because the main purpose of dark worm is to be drawn with ravine to be discarded for ravine to add a different card and then it summons itself to the field being another dragon it's essentially a worse mistleton uh that's essentially what this card is uh but like i can't find a card that fills the role better uh because of the fact that like if you open ravine plus tuner plus this you discard this for ravine add senatus to your hand Summon this from the grave with its own effect. Senatus discards the tuner, gets a different tuner, and then you have full combo because you have an extra dragon on the board. You only have two tuners in circulation, but you have the extra dragon on the board, so like that makes that work. One copy of a Morphage Goliath being the 21st and last monster in the deck. This one should really need no explanation. Uh, you're trying to make multiple interruptions and then use the Hieratic Link to bounce an opponent's card and then summon this on your opponent's turn, protecting it with Titanic Galaxy. Uh, so like you're trying to keep your opponent from playing. Great Yu-Gi-Oh! strategy, I hear. But anyway, going into the spells, most important card in the deck, three copies of Dragon Ravine. So good, we're playing more copies of it. We're playing two Terraforming, and we are also playing the Set Rotation and Oracle of Zephyr to be the Set Rotation target. Now, you only have a 1.3% chance of drawing Set Rotation and Oracle of Zephyr in the same hand, so it's definitely still worth it to play, because this deck needs all the consistency boosters it can need. Like, we're playing Upstart, we're playing Cards of Consonance, these cards were designed in a different era of Yu-Gi-Oh. These cards were designed in 2010 when we still drew six cards going first. That is something that a lot of people that try to play this deck don't seem to understand, is that they do not modify their mindset for modern day Yu-Gi-Oh. Of This card was designed to be a card in a six card opening hand, and that's why it being a minus one didn't really matter. Like playing this card and then discarding a different card is a minus one because this just sits on your real on your field and gives you really nothing um so like you need to be able to offset that with the cards you're playing and because we're not drawing six cards anymore the consistency of us drawing ravine has gone down the drain like we literally lost 15 percent consistency of drawing one of six ravines like just because of the ruling change uh, now, fortunately, we have Sinidus, and, like, Sinidus effectively functions as another three copies of Ravine because it's a starter card, which Ducks never was, but still, you, you need to be playing these cards. And like I said, 1.35% chance to draw both of these cards together. Uh, if you're just trying to draw one of six Ravines, it's only a 55% chance to draw one of these six cards in your opening five in a 39-card deck. Not very good. Literally flip a coin and see if you can play. But again, fortunately, because we have Senatus now, and Senatus is a starter card, that's an additional three starter cards that could work with what you're going for, and you have a 75.25% chance of opening either one of your six ravines or one of your three Senatuses. So, like, the deck got a little bit of a consistency boost in that department of at least being able to have hands that mold themselves into plays a little bit better. But anyway, carrying on. More consistency boosters. Double cards of Constance that I want to play three of. Double uh, Dragoonity Divine Lance that I want to play three of. A Foolish Burial to be synergy with sending more tuners to grave, sending Zephyrus to grave in certain instances. Um, sometimes you Foolish like uh, Leviton or Red Med if your LP gets ashed, but you're able to keep playing. Uh, and then sending Dark Worm, obviously. And then the Upstart Goblin for further consistency rounding out. Like, I've thought about cutting the Upstart for the third Cards of Consonance, but uh, really, like, Cards of Consonance is very situational and sometimes it conflicts with Sinidus. Um, whereas Upstart increases the probability of opening cards in your deck by 1% across the board. Uh, so it makes your deck as a whole more consistent. Um, and, like, it doesn't require any outside influence. So, like, that's why it's being played. Uh, I want to play three of this, but there's just no room. <laughs> like, it's a Dragoonity card and it equips a tuner from deck? Sign me up, fam. How do we play three? I couldn't tell you. Uh, but anyway, 
Two copies of World Legacy Guard Dragon and one copy of Monster Reborn. These are just generically good extenders. This card is bonkers in this deck, way better than World Legacy like Succession. Because like even like the most common thing I end up doing with this, if I'm not extending my play, is adding a tuner back to my hand after I card to consonance it away. Like if my hand is Senatus plus Tuner plus cards of consonants plus this, I'll card the consonants the tuner away, and if I don't draw another Dragoonity card for Senatus, I use Guard Dragon, uh, World Legacy Guard Dragon, to add that tuner back to my hand so that I can normal Senatus and discard it. Like, that's the kind of interaction I'm doing with this card. Uh, so it's actually kind of funny in a lot of ways, but Reborn's obviously generically good. Last three cards in the deck are three Call by the Graves. You obviously need to play this uh, at three because this deck has the, uh, the resiliency of somebody with no immune system. I'm sure there's like an anti-vaxxer joke in there somewhere, but that is honestly beneath me. Uh, but yeah, if your opponent like lightly sneezes or like blows on your cards while you're comboing off, that's how fragile this deck is. Like if they even like know what you're doing and like confront you about it, like your combo just crumbles because this deck is super fragile. But like I said, this deck's not meant to be played competitively, at least not. It's built with competitive mindsets, but it's not meant to be played competitively. But anyway, extra deck, two copies of Heretic Seal of the Heavenly Spheres. Uh, necessary two of, one's for the combo and one's for ending on to get the Goliath. Uh, one LP, one Pisty, and one Agrapan. Uh, I have no idea how these cards exist. I think that these two cards need to be banned at some point because this limits extra deck design because it summons anything from your extra deck, and this limits dragon design in general because it summons any of them from your deck. This one's kind of alright because you have to access it from your deck and then revive it. Uh, whereas this one, like this in conjunction with this, is not okay. This in conjunction with this is not okay. This just just not okay. So like I could easily see these cards getting hit in the future, but for right now we'll play them because the more like the more I try to think about why these cards are designed and legal, baffles me. Konami knows they can't do insane dragon support yet they always do. Once are you just gold dread? This is the last link monster in the deck. You need to have this to clear your guard dragons off the board for your combo, and occasionally you do draw four cards off of it and meld your hand. But those are all the links in the deck for the synchros. This is a weird feeling. Only one copy of Dragoon Knight Vajrayana. You only need one uh, to either step up into an extra negation off of like uh, a Garuda uh, on top of your, the rest of your combo, or uh, your combo is good enough that you synchro summon Gator and then you summon this out of your extra deck off Agrapan, uh, and then overlay those two into a Tum to get the Darkness Metal out of your deck after you got Leviton. So like that's what this is here for. But you only ever need the one. Uh, Gator obviously important because it accesses Zephyrus from your deck and does other stuff. Two copies of Dragoon Knight Barka. This card is casually Soul Charge. Uh, this card is so good now. <laughs> you just equip three tuners and summon them all. Um, Jesus. I never thought that there would be a day when this card was the best card in my extra deck, but it just is. Weird. Uh, but then one Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon because it's a negation that we end on. And uh, this card is a Ghost or a Stardust Dragon. But it's still supposed to be a Boarload Savage Dragon proxy. I have gone to all of my locals in my area, cannot find a Boarload Savage Dragon, have been trying to find one for a week. At this point, I could have just ordered one of TCG Player and I would have had it by now, but because I kept putting it off, being like, oh, I'll just find one locally, uh, I don't have one. But this is not a Stardust Dragon. The only reason I'm using my Ghost Stardust Dragon is because it's a card that you cannot physically see, so it resembles nothing. But this is a Boarload Savage Dragon. Stardust Dragon sucks. We're not playing that card. 100%. Boreload Savage Dragon. Boreload Savage Dragon. For those of you in the back, Boreload Savage Dragon. Uh, last synchro in my extra deck is a copy of Dragoon Eye Ascalon. This was sort of a flex spot. Um, all the other 14 cards were like necessary for being negations or combo pieces. I had one extra deck spot left over. Um, and this card is like the card that does the most. Uh, I didn't think that this card would ever find its way into one of my extra decks, but like this is actually just really good in the metagame right now because it banishes Thunder Dragon Col uh, Colossuses, it banishes Salaman Great Monsters, so you don't have to worry about Banelanx. Um, and it's like it's really easy to make because we're playing Leviton, Mistleton, and uh, all the interactions Coos has. Uh, so like it's, it's, it's just really good. <laughs> it's it's actually just really decent. You're not summoning it turn one to be a floater. No, 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 no. Bad thought. Bad thought. Don't ever have that thought again. This card's floating effect doesn't exist. It might as well not even be on the card. Forget that it ever happened. This card's effect to banish cards on the field, that's the one that matters. It's like if you could just summon Dark Arm Dragon from your extra deck. That's what this card is. You just remove all the things from the board, and you try to go for game. You try to give him the big punch. The last two cards in the extra deck are two uh, Xyz monsters. Titanic Galaxy to be the negate and the protection for the Goliath, obviously. 
And then Hyrag Dragon King of Atum is another combo piece for the big, beefy combo that I have yet to show on the channel. Uh, but I did talk a little bit about in the video in the form of when I was talking about Vajrayana being special off Agrippan, and then you overlay into this and get access to both Red Med and Leviton at the same time. But basically, that is the deck. So let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below, as always. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. It feels so weird. It's been years since I've done a Dragoonity deck profile. Uh, but yeah, this is a good gold fishing deck. This is a good deck for solitaring. I really like solitaring with this deck. Um, but like I said, this deck is something that you could only ever get away with taking to like a locals, and even then it'd be rough depending on how competitive your locals is. Uh, this deck has like no competitive viability to it unless you go first every game and your opponent opens zero ways to interact with you. Uh, that's literally it. Which I mean, some people play decks like that anyway, so if you're looking for a fun deck to play that's something to try and mess around with, then I guess this certainly falls into that category. But anyway, as always guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. As I've already said, if you're new here, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. If you want to see more awesome Yu-Gi-Oh! content, there's tons of other things I'd like to show you. But other than that, if you like the video, make sure to leave a like. And like I said, questions, comments, concerns, comments down below. I'll do my best to try to address them. But other than that, as I've already said, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time as usual, guys. And take care. I'll see you in the next video.